Let me give one more example. Most of the religions say that you should not molest a woman, you should not rape a woman. Hinduism says that, Judaism says that, Christianity says that, Islam says the same. So what's the difference between Islam and the other religions? Islam, besides telling you not to molest a woman, not to rape a woman, it shows you a way how to achieve a state in which people will not molest, will not tease, will not rape any woman. Islam has the system of hijab. Many times people talk about hijab for the woman, hijab for the woman in Islam, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran first speaks about the hijab for the man and then for the woman. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 30, say to the believing man that he should lower his gaze and guard his modesty. Whenever a man looks at a woman, if any brazen thought comes, he should lower his gaze. One there was a Muslim who was staring at a girl for a long time. I said, brother, what are you doing? It's not allowed. He said, a beloved prophet said, the first glance is forgiven, the second is prohibited. I have not completed half my glance. <laughs> what did the prophet mean when he said that the first glance is forgiven, the second is prohibited? What the prophet meant that unintentionally if you look at a woman, it will be forgiven, but don't intentionally look at her to feast on her beauty. That does not mean you can look at a woman for 10 minutes without blinking and saying, I have not completed my glance. The next verse speaks about the hijab for the woman. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 31, say to the believing woman that she should lower her gaze and guard her modesty and display not her beauty except what appears ordinarily of and to draw a head covering over the bosom, over the chest and display not her beauty except in front of her husband, her father, her son and a big list of mehram, the close relatives who she can't marry is given. Basically, there are six criteria of hijab given in the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. The first is the extent which differs between the man and the woman. For the man, it's from the navel to the knee. For the woman, the complete body should be covered. The only parts that can be seen are the face and the hands up to the wrist. These are the only parts that can be seen. Otherwise, the complete body should be covered. The remaining five criteria are the same for the man and the woman. The second is that the clothes they wear, it should not be tight fitting so that it reveals the figure. Third, it should not be transparent or translucent so that you can see through. Fourth, it should not be so glamorous so that it attracts the opposite sex. Fifth, it should not resemble that of the opposite sex. And sixth, it should not resemble that of the unbelievers. This, in short, is the hijab which is mentioned in Quran and Sayyid Hadith. Furthermore, Allah SWT says in Surah Azab, chapter number 33, verse number 59, O Prophet, tell your wives, and your daughters, and the believing women, that when they go abroad, they should put on the cloak, they should put on the jilbab, so that they shall be recognized, and it will prevent them from being molested. So Quran says, hijab has been prescribed for the women, so that they shall be recognized, and it will prevent them from being molested. Let me ask you a question. Suppose there are two twin sisters, who are very beautiful, equally beautiful, and if they are walking down the streets of Chennai, and one sister, she's wearing the Islamic hijab, complete body covered, except the face and the hands up to the wrist. And the other twin sister, she's wearing the Western clothes, the mini skirts and short. And if they're walking down the streets of Chennai, and around the corner, there's a hooligan, there's a ruffian who's waiting for a catch, who's wearing to tease a girl. I'm asking the question, which girl will it tease? Will it tease the girl wearing the Islamic hijab, or will it tease the girl wearing the mini skirts or shorts? Which girl will it is? The girl? The girl wearing the western clothes, mini skirts and shorts. Easy answer. Easy question, easy answer. You don't have to be an intelligent person to answer this. So Quran rightly says that hijab had been prescribed for the women so that they shall be recognized and prevent them from being molested. After this, the Islamic Sharia says, any man rapes a woman, capital punishment, death penalty, May non muslims say, death penalty? In this 21st century, Islam is a barbaric religion. It's a ruthless law. But when I ask the question, and I've asked this question to thousands of non-Muslims, that suppose, God forbid, someone rapes your wife, or someone rapes your mother, and if you are made the judge, and if the rapist is born in front of you, what punishment will you give? 
Believe me, all of them said, we'll put him to death. Some went to the extent of saying, we will torture him to death. So why do you have the double standard? Someone rapes your mother, your wife, you want to put him to death. Somebody rapes somebody else's mother, else's wife, you say death penalty is a barbaric law. Why these double standards? And do you know America, USA, which we look upon to be one of the most advanced countries in the world, do you know it has one of the highest rates of rape in the world? According to the 1990 statistics of FBI, in the year 1990 alone, 102,555 cases of rape took place. And the FBI statistics said only 16% were reported. To get the exact figure, you have to multiply by 6.25, and you get a total of 640,968 rapes took place in 1990 in USA alone. That means every day, 1,756 rapes took place. And out of those reported, only 10% were arrested. That means only 1.6% of the rapists were arrested. Out of those arrested, 50% were let free before the trial. That means only 0.8% of the rapists underwent a trial. That means 125 rapes you commit, and the chances will be caught and undergoing a trial is one. It's a very good bargain. 125 rapes you do, and chances you'll get caught and go for the trial is only one. And majority of the case, Though the American law says seven years rigorous imprisonment, most of the time, oh, it's the first time he's done, so give him a lesser punishment. If you read the statistics of 1996, U.S. Department of Justice, it says that in 1996, on average, 2,713 cases of rape took place every day in USA. That means every 32 seconds, one rape is taking place in America. We are here for more than an hour. Already more than 100 drips may have taken place in America since the time I'm giving this lecture. <laughs> I'm asking you the question that if you implement the Islamic Sharia in USA, that whenever a man looks at a woman, if any brazen, any unashamed thought comes in his mind, he should lower his gaze. After that, every woman should wear the Islamic hijab, complete body covered. The only parts that can be seen are the face and hands up to the wrist. And after that, if any man drapes a woman, Capital punishment, death penalty. I'm asking the question, will the rate of rape in USA, will it increase? Will it remain the same or will it decrease? It will decrease. It's a practical law. You implement the Sharia and you get results. That is the reason I say Islam, besides showing good things, it shows you a way how to achieve a state in which these good things can be practiced. And today, the least rate of rape in any country in the world, it's in Saudi Arabia. Not that the police is very intelligent. The law is so strict. You implement the Sharia, you get results. And if Saudi Arabia relaxes this law, even in Saudi Arabia, the rape will increase and even theft will increase. It is the law which is important. The Islamic Sharia. You implement the Sharia, you get results. That's the reason I say Islam, besides speaking good things, shows you a way how to achieve the state of goodness. Therefore, I say Islam is a religion which shows you how to lead life. It's a way of life. It caters to both the body as well as the soul.